we have on our agenda. It's going to be a panel discussion that is going to be presented by the differently able minister and his team. Mr. Abu Bakr, if you are on, can you please come on? Administrators of the Gambia College and my fellow students. My name is Abakar Njai, the former mm -hmm. differently able minister at the Gambia College Student Teachers Association. Uh, we are gathered today here um, and we are very much thankful to the 8th Executive Council of Star for coming up with this uh, great initiative of uh, bringing a student with. Of which they also include um, persons with disabilities uh, that are here in the Gambia College. So we are having a symposium and then with me here are my panelists. Any moment from now, I will allow them to introduce themselves. But before that, I will want to give you an overview um, of the whole program. Uh, this symposium aims to bring stakeholders from SAR uh, and also from the Gambia Federation of the Disabled. Uh, and also we have here in our midst a participant from the Directorate of Special Needs under the Ministry of uh, Basic and Secondary Education. So the aim of this symposium is to bring together uh, is to bring together stakeholders from SAR, from the Gambia Federation of the Disabled, and also from the Directorate of Special Needs under the Ministry of Basic and Ed Secondary Education. So as to discuss and educate general students of the School of Education on the needs of meaningful inclusion of persons with disabilities in the education sector. The theme of this um, uh, symposium is the meaningful inclusion of persons with disabilities in our education sector. That is the theme. So as I said, um, the aims of the symposium is to bring together um, stakeholders from these different areas that I have mentioned and also to give them the chance to um, actually address on issues that are of pertinent importance to those as persons with disability and also to enlighten the general student body in the aspects of uh, meaningful inclusion of persons with disabilities. Here is the agenda of our program. The first, on the, uh, the first item on the agenda is the opening prayers, followed by the introduction of the panelists. From there, question and answer session from the MC, that is my humble self, to the panelists. And then students or the audience are also going to be given the chance to ask the panelists provided they have any question with regards to the topic that is to be discussed here today. And then finally, we are going to do the uh, closing ceremony as well. So we are starting right away without much, uh, wasting much time. Uh, I will start uh, to do the introduction 
of my panelists uh, because um, person I will introduce to the audience is your worship, uh, Magistrate Kurubali. Can we give him a round of applause? Also, we have Madam Aida Bagi from Special Needs under the Ministry of Basic and Secondary Education. Can we give her a round of applause? And the last panelist um, is our own Honorable, who is no other person than Honorable Babukar Sane. Can we give him a round of applause? Um, Considering these great people we have here, I can give you this assurance that a lot is going to be learned today because we have a very resourceful and experienced individual who are going to take us through of this very important theme to be discussed here. So um, moving forward, I will now start um, the questioning um, of what we have here. First question will go to um, your worship, that is the magistrate, uh, to tell us who is in fact a person with disability. Who is a person called, or who is this individual we call a person with disability? Your worship. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator, for giving me this opportunity. The only disclaimer I will first make is this. I'm not sure, even though the question is short, but may require or demand a very broad answer. So as a matter of caution, it will be plausible if I know the length of time I have so that I can limit myself within the time given. If it is open-ended, I don't mind. I can speak within a reasonable time. Mr. a moderator. Yeah, thank you so much, Your Worship. Um, you are given 20 minutes, but five questions are to be answered within these 20 minutes. So this is only one question out of the five I have. Thank you. Yes, well, how many minutes do I have for this particular question? You can answer this within two minutes. Okay. Thank you very much. For the purpose of this discourse and question, that is for me to tell you as to who is a person with disability. A person with disability, according to the definition derived from the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, Persons with Disabilities Act, 2021, American with Disabilities Act, known as ADA, defined disability as physical, mental, intellectual, or sensory impairment, which in interaction with various barriers may hinder their full and effective participation in an equal basis with others. This means that any individual or any person who has a physical condition, mental condition, intellectual or sensory condition, which throughout in interaction with various barriers will give you limitations restriction on an equal basis with others. For instance, if you are visually impaired, you can't access textbooks in the relevant format, you have a disability and you have a condition called disability. So you are a person with a disability. For instance, if you have hearing challenges or conditions, it means you are a person with disability. If you are an amputee or you sit on a wheelchair, 
you have a disability and you are all a person with disability. And of course, before I round up on this question, I would just want to recommend an amendment just for an understanding. According to the universally accepted definition, we always should be addressed as persons with disabilities in the plural context. If you are an individual, you are a person with disability, not differently able. Why do we reject differently able is this? The concept is that we are always differently able if we are not given the right equipment, the relevant equipment, and if we are not treated equally with others, then we are all differently able. This is why if you read the entire section of the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, from Article 1 up to Article 50, you will never see or find differently able. You always see persons with disabilities. And if you read our own disability law of the Gambia, which is called Persons with Disabilities Act 2021, from Articles 1 up to Article 71, you will always come across persons with disabilities. Why persons with disabilities? Because it looks at you as a person who has disability as a condition, but not differently able. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Um, Your was uh, Magistrate Kurum Kurvali for giving us that comprehensive definition of who is meant by persons with disabilities, or who is a disabled person. No, don't say a disabled person. Persons with disabilities. Thank you so much for that correction. Uh, moving forward, I will now go to the uh, second panelist, who is Madam Baji, to ask her uh, a question uh, based on the topic that we are discussing today. Uh, and the first question I have for her is that um, at the level of the ministry, what does meaningful inclusion of persons with disabilities mean to you? That is the question. Yes, I'm having the mic. Madam is around. She is part of the panel. Uh, yes, madam. Uh, yes, after this, um, you, you, yes, she is seated or? after you introduce her. Uh, okay, uh, good uh, afternoon to each and everyone here to, present. Uh, like I was rightly introduced, yeah, my I name is Aida Baji. I work with the Ministry of Basic and Secondary Education the under the Inclusive huh? Early yes. Childhood yeah, and Inclusive yes, Education yes. Directory. Okay. okay, like the question that is put across, what does meaningful inclusive meaningful inclusive education mean? My my directorate looks at looks into the welfare of learners with disabilities. We call them learners with special needs. So there is a lot in place for them. What do we mean by inclusion? Inclusion here stands to mean the involvement of every person, provision for every child that is found in the classroom. Inclusion here looks at equity. Equity means to each individual according to your individual learning needs. So inclusion, meaningful inclusion to my own understanding and how are we handling it at the ministry. We don't only look at the school environment. Meaningful inclusion starts from the family, from the home. How are children treated from the home once parents realize that this child has a disability or this child is born with a disability. The discrimination starts from the home. Once that child is brought up in a very peaceful environment and the child is included in every activity that's happening in the house and provisions are in place for that child, the child grows up to be a very resourceful person, a very happy child that is ready for 
enrollment in the school. So once children are enrolled in schools, we want them to be included, we want them to be provided with all the basic necessities that are relevant for the child's education. So meaningful inclusion here looks at the school environment. Where is the school located? Is the school environment friendly for every learner, particularly learners with disabilities? Is the school environment or the classroom layout, the infrastructure in the school, is it very friendly to every learner? The classrooms, are they up for the wheelchair users to be able to access in terms of accessibility? The toilets, are they wide for the wheelchair users to be able to access them? If they can be able to access the toilets, can they be able to use the toilets that you and I are using in the school environment? And the classroom setting, is the classroom setting friendly for learners with visual impairment, learners with hearing problems, again, learners with physical conditions? Because we all are growing up and we want to be teachers tomorrow, not so. So if you are a teacher in the school setting, you are under the Ministry of Basic and Secondary Education. What is in place for you to be able to practice a meaningful, inclusive education for every learner? We now look at the syllabus. The curriculum in place for every learner. Is it suitable? Is it friendly for every learner? Looking at the difference in the learners in the environment. So our ministry, our directorate, looks at all these things. We implement policies. We implement activities that are friendly for every learner. In implementing those activities, we teach teachers as to how to handle these children. How do you educate children in the classroom to meet their individual learner needs? If a child in the classroom needs a braille machine, why would you give that child a book and pen? If a child in the classroom needs a sign language interpreter, why would you be in that classroom teaching that child, facing the blackboard and giving that child your back? Because the hearing impaired can benefit a lot from your gestures, your body language, your lips, the lip read. So these are the things we look at in terms of you achieving what we look, what we call meaningful inclusion. Meaningful inclusion, inclusive education here, means the involvement of every learner, the provision of learner needs of all students in the classroom based on their individual learner needs. I guess I have answered your question. Yeah, it is well Thank answered. You. Thank you so much. Um, I will now um, acknowledge the presence of the vice principal of um, the Gambia College, that is Madame Dow. She does join us. Can we give her a round of applause? She is also part of the panelists, and she is going to help us a lot in answering some questions that are designed to her. So we're moving on with our questioning. Um, I will now go to the Honorable Minister of Sir, that is um, Honorable Babukar Sane, and ask him this question. Honorable, what is the role of the differently able ministry of the Student Teachers Association of the Gambia College? What is the role of the differently able ministry of the Student Teachers Association of the Gambia College? Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable Bakaringai, for this wonderful question. The role of the Minister of the Differently Able under Student Teachers Association um, is very wide, but limited to this discussion. I would state a few of them. One of them is to look into the different needs of the students that have disabilities within the Gambia College School of Education. The other role is to also advise the council as well as to discuss with the administration of the Gambia College in terms of the needs, the wants, and the challenges that persons with disability face within the School of Education of Gambia College. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, 
the boy that we are rascal the reception that was thrown to him. I will now move to the vice principal of the Gambia College, that is Madame Ndau, and ask her uh, uh, this uh, question. Uh, Madam, as a renowned institution or as a recognized institution in the Gambia and abroad, sorry, can you reframe this again? As a recognized institution in the Gambia and abroad, what role does college play in transforming the lives and livelihoods of persons with disabilities through education? Thank you very much for that question. And uh, to my fellow panelists, good day to all of you, your Lordship. You're welcome to Gambia College and uh, to the Star Week. To Madam Baji, welcome to the Gambia College. I think we should have been here before, but then because we had a series of meetings, that's why I'm just coming in. And to all of you, good day. The question I think you've asked is the role of Gambia College in changing the livelihood or the life of uh, persons with disability. Mm -hmm. Gambia College, when you look at it, uh, if I'm to start from history, if I'm to give you history, I think it's the oldest tertiary institution in this country and obviously has touched the lives of so many people. A lot of people who find themselves in the civil service have passed through the Gambia College. So if Gambia College is the oldest tertiary institution and is touching the life of individuals, it is important for Gambia College to also play a part in the life of those that we call persons with disability. I think this goes a long way when we had to look at the institutions around and we realized that persons with disability we are subjected or we are left to become sort of how you call dependent and that is beggars in the street. When they also, like all of us, uh, have their knowledge, are also capable because uh, having a disability does not mean the person has to be dependent on other people for life and so on or have to uh, live his or her life, uh, his or her, the rest of her life as a beggar in the street and so on. So we realize that we can play a very important role in changing the life of these people. And that is when we sort of uh, in included them in our teacher training program. And uh, including them in the teacher training program, they come in as students. And uh, because they come in as students, they follow the same course that all the other students would follow and then at the end of the day they get their qualifications and they are able to get a job. And I think we all would agree that getting a job, getting a salary would obviously change our lives. Because we all, when we have the resources, especially the financial resources, that goes a long way in changing our lives. And that is what they also need. What we need is what they also need. But they are human beings. There are young men and women who can get married. They can have their children, they can have their families, and so on. So why do they have to depend on begging, be in the streets, under the hot sun, day in, day out, and then depending on other people to throw a few coins, and so on. They have the knowledge, they have the skills. So we bring them in. And I think uh, we have been training series of them. I think uh, since we started, I must say that we have trained more than 50, uh, 50 persons with disabilities. And that is visual impairment, uh, hard of hearing, physical challenges, and all of that. And we continue. Because at the moment, we have, I think, about 22 or more students who are in the School of Education and are, they are being trained as teachers. And not only did we stop at training them to go into the special school, but what we have also done is work with the Ministry of Basics. Because I think uh, uh, when people are trained, other people need to know what they are doing and also appreciate them. So we work with the Ministry of Basic and Secondary Education and some of them are now posted into uh, what we call in code uh, normal schools where you have children with no disabilities and they're going in there and teaching. And I can tell you that one of the best teachers uh, is a visual impaired student and 
that person is doing everything and he's changing life. We've not only changed his life, but he's also changing the lives of other people. So I think Gambia College, Gambia College is playing that role in order to change the lives of persons with disability, for them also to change the lives of other people and to contribute to society, not just to sit there and then be begging and so on, because they have potential and they can do it. And some of them are even far better, far better and far more productive than those of us who we call ourselves, we call persons without any disability. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Madam, for that wonderful response to the question that was posted. Um, I'm now moving to the magistrate, uh, that is um, uh, his work, Magistrate Kurubali, to ask him this question. Um, we experienced that persons with disabilities are called different names. So uh, we want to ask you this question. Which term is universally agreed? to be used on uh, persons with disabilities. Thank you. I have said this earlier, that always it is wrong to address us as a disabled. This description or objective is primitive, it is barbaric, it is archaic, it is unacceptable to call somebody with a condition as a disabled, to say he is a disabled. Come on, that is wrong. Or to look at him and say he is a handicap, that is wrong. Or to look at him or her and give a very negative description. So as society evolves, we think outside the box and continue to explore the right names to address people with different conditions. I said, the universally accepted address or definition or appellation, if you like, is to address us as persons with disabilities in the plural form. So you can say they are persons with disabilities. So if he or she is an individual, or a person, then you can say he is a person with disability and also not differently able. Because remember inter earlier, I told you that the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, which the Gambia has ratified in 2015, from its article, from Article 1 up to Article 50, you will never find disabled, you will never find handicapped, you will never find differently able. It is persons with disabilities. And again, I refer you to our own disability law in the Gambia called Persons with Disabilities Act 2021 in which section from section 1 up to section 71 you will never find disabled, differently able, handicapped but always persons with disabilities. So since we have agreed to the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, but then it means we have agreed to all the profit provisions set forth there, mm -hmm. and of course our own disability law. But if you deviate and address us with different names, then meaning you have flagrantly violated all the provisions in this particular legislation. For the purpose of the question, 
wherein now Bhattachi. Thank you so much. Um, Your Worship, Magister Kurubali, for giving us um, that very important definition that is universally agreed or that is used on persons with disabilities. Instead of calling them handicapped or differently able, um, he said it here that they are called persons with disabilities if you are referring them as children. If you are referring to an individual, you can call him or her as person with disability. That is a very good one. Thank you so much. Um, time now to, to a question to Madam Baji uh, to help us answer that. Uh, this time around, I will ask you uh, what efforts is the ministry doing in ensuring that persons with disabilities are meaningfully included in our education sector. Thank you, Mara. Okay, um, thank you for that wonderful question. I would, like, I, would, I would want to take you back to my previous um, explanations. Looking at our mandate as the ministry, um, as a directorate of early childhood and inclusive education, mind you, the directorate looks at ECDs and special needs education in the country. Now, what our mandate is, is to implement policies that are related to disability education in the Gambia. Again, to carry out identification, meaning to go on regional identification exercise, to be able to identify, to be able to bring out children or students that we feel or have identified some level of disabilities in them. In doing that, we also organize things to do what we call medical and educational ex ex um, assessment for disability issues in children during enrollment or after enrollment or at times it's a routine exercise that happens annually. Again, we build teacher capacity in the area of special education to be able to help or give additional support to learners with special needs in schools. Also, we... Sorry, can you come up with a question again? All right, sorry, let me quickly go to that. Okay, again, we train itinerant teachers. Maybe many of you have known these itinerant teachers in the region. We train itinerant teachers in the region, each of the regions from region 1 to region 6. We have itinerant teachers in the clusters that go around in supporting children with special needs. When you talk of children with special needs, you are now talking about children that have disabilities. The disabilities are in different forms, like um, the magistrate rightly put, right, rightly mentioned. We have the visual impaired, the hearing impaired, um, the learning difficulties, or the intellectual and developmental disorders or disabilities. Again, you have the physical challenge. Each of these levels has its own level of severity. You have the visually impaired. Not every child that has visual impairment needs um, adequate assistance. Some of them, all you need is to change the sitting position to be able to help that child be able to achieve in the classroom. Some of them will need correction glasses. When we go for our medical assessment, then they are further sent to the health sector for them to be further assessed. Then prescriptions given, those prescriptions are sent back to the office for the procurement of glasses for those students. Teaching and learning materials are also provided for learners with disabilities. Let's come back to the visually impaired. We have braille machines. We have tape recorders. These are digital tape recorders that we need. Um, I can recognize this tape recorder, it was given by the office. But now we have a different type of these digitalized tape recorders that are given. We have braille papers, braille machines. We also give wheelchairs to wheelchair users. We have coaches that we give to the, the physically challenged that have lower limbs or upper limbs challenges. So many other things that the ministry is doing. Again, 
We build capacity from teachers right down to cluster monitors, right down to the mainstream settings. Even the madrasas are now included. We build madrasa teachers' knowledge in special education and how do we help them. Have I answered your question? Yes. Thank you so much. Uh,